trapped in a storage facility with a vicious, bloodthirsty monster that turns out to be an extraterrestrial, trapped there worst of all with your recent ex-girlfriend and her lover, your best friend. Everybody's worst nightmare, Noel Clark, 2012, the very British science fiction horror film, Storage 24. So I got the idea to watch this movie because of an article I was skimming by online that was about movies that really bombed at the box office over the years that did not have a great opening in the theaters, although it has made a decent amount of money as a rental and going forward from there. Maybe a little too British. It didn't catch on with American audiences. Maybe too much overdone or redone of stories that did it didn't jump out at anyone as original, but I decided, what the heck, I'm gonna watch it and see what's up. You're immediately pulled into the dynamic between the two friends at the beginning. Noel Clark, the only guy that I knew of all the people starring in this movie, he was in Into Darkness, the Star Trek Into Darkness movie. The other actors and actresses are completely unknown to me. It opens with him in a car, stuck in traffic with his best friend, talking about his breakup with this girl. And at first, I should say woman, at this point you feel like he's really heartbroken, but he's mildly irritating. As time goes on, minutes by minute, you feel like you kind of sympathize with the poor guy. Other times you want to just punch him in the face. It really is an odd, it's an odd experience that kind of pulls you in and makes you more interested in the movie and you might be otherwise. You're like, how is this going to work? Wait, what's going on here? What? Oh, that's what his friend who doesn't seem to be very compassionate. And then you, the viewer, are like, yeah, maybe he's right. This guy's annoying me also. Finally, we find out they're on their way to the storage facility. There's some stuff stored there. And now that they've broken up, Noel Clark's character and his ex are going to split up their stuff and get it out of there. Of course, they arrive to find out that she's already there with some other guy and her best friend, and it really isn't clear her relationship with that other guy. But of course, they're all at the storage facility together, and of course, it doesn't go very well. It's pretty ugly, and you are at this point feeling like, why isn't he being more mature about this? Then there's the plane crash. There's some sort of debris. The emergency systems kick in and they are locked inside the storage facility. It's sort of an interesting twist on a facility that is meant to be secure to keep your stuff secure and people, unwanted intruders out. When you're trapped inside and want to get out, it works against you. So now they are trapped in this giant metal maze of metal box, boxes and rooms with this creature and the killing and the murder ensue. From there, there's a whole lot of repeat, sort of almost like intentionally not being original as an Easter egg or a tribute to a genre. You finally, they find a, a crazy guy who lives in the storage facility because of his breakup with his crazy wife, as he describes her, although he's not exactly a well-balanced individual. This is sort of a repeat of things you saw at Friday the 13th and, and other horror flicks where there'd be some weird oddball who's kind of a, overly aggressive that gives you the idea that he might be the killer, he might be the bad guy, who makes your protagonist think that he's up to no good or that you as the viewer think, ah, that's the guy. And of course it turns out not to be the guy and the guy ends up being gutted horrifically with a whole lot of graphic bloodshed by the alien monster. The story is not entirely, uh, you know, it, it doesn't stand out as being all that original as they flee through the maze of stuff and they do battle with the evil alien. The alien makes his way to the front desk. Of course, they don't necessarily know he's an alien. Makes his way to the front desk. He is killed, the people keeping the desk, and there's sort of a suggestion that it used some of the equipment there. Perhaps it called somebody, E.T., phone, Home. 
And that's sort of the the summary of the story. It's not all that complex. Eventually, they make their way out of the storage facility to freedom. And, well, I guess that's what I forgot. If there's any part of the story that is meaningful, it is the way that it continues to develop with the two friends and the ex-girlfriend. Of course, he finds out eventually, Noel Clark's character, that his ex-girlfriend is in a relationship with his best friend. That extra dude that was there is not the dude in question, and her best friend is not like the female in question. They didn't go there. But his best friend, who was annoyed with listening to him whine about the breakup at the beginning, of course he's annoyed. He's been annoyed. He wanted to replace him and be with the woman. Throughout the course of the survival situation, though, you actually become more sympathetic with Noel Clark's character. He doesn't come across as whiny necessarily, and he's tough enough that he survives when others don't. In the long run, he's the one that gets his ex-girlfriend out of the building safely, though she had lectured him a short while before about how he didn't do anything for her. She didn't feel any inspiration with him. She didn't feel any, she wasn't passionate with him. He wasn't of help to her. He wasn't like a provider, a hunter-gatherer, or any of those things that would, would make her excited. Their relationship was just dull, and he was dull, and she was done, and he's the guy that gets her out alive and safe, at least so far. They come out to a world where he has left his car, and she had left her car. I forgot to mention he had seen her car on the way in. He broke off one of her windshield wipers in a weird act of angry rejection, passion, whatever. Now on their way out, happily ever after having lived, right? No, no. On their way out, they find the devastation of London around them. Something right out of the War of the Worlds as large alien ships are zapping buildings and civilizations collapsing. And apparently, whatever was in the airplane, clearly an alien that had been captured. Now other aliens had arrived, and it was essentially a war zone. And in the middle of this, his ex-girlfriend says to him, Really? Did, did, did you break my windshield wiper? <laughs> and it's so funny in that moment that it's like, huh. In the end, I think it's a much better movie than, you know, than I expected. Um, I mean, it's not not a, not all that original, not all that earth shattering. It was not a must see thing. It had interesting homages to, you know, the scary guy that might be the killer. There was an interesting Easter egg homage to Alien when uh, the alien gets right up on her and has her by the throat and looks at her closely, and it looks just like that scene with Ripley and the alien and alien and aliens and aliens in that franchise. But there with the ending, with the weird twist in their whole romantic relationship having broken up and the weird windshield wiper thing and the, the trivial trivialness of it when she addresses it, it really drove home that feeling from the beginning that he was making a big deal out of nothing, out of their breakup in the scheme of things. It was nothing. And now at the end, the world is literally coming to pieces and the aliens and she's talking about her windshield wiper. That part was quite smart. And the more that I thought about it after, the more that I liked it. So if you can find it, watch it, enjoy it. Let me know what you think. If you have seen it, let me know what you think below. I thought it was a solidly entertaining movie. If you've got nothing else to do and you haven't seen it, watch it. Not that it's a, a modern classic or anything like that, but it was a lot better movie than what I expected it to be.